Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amber, and today I'm going to share with you an unhaul. I've never done this before, but I thought this could be something that I share instead of a weekly wrap up this week since I really have nothing to talk about. The past two weeks, I just have had nothing really to talk about. Last week, I did make one because I was only watching, I was only reading Harry Potter and anything that I was really trying otherwise. I just wasn't getting into. I was doing nothing a lot of them, and then. Watching wise is all rewatches, so there's like nothing to talk about. Same this week, I actually post I Harry Potter realized that I was ready to move on. I didn't really need to be reading them at that point. And then when I went to pick up books out of the book from my shelves, I realized that most of them I really didn't want to read, and then realized that I needed to do a cleansing. So I really wanted to get a video up, so I thought I would share with you an unhaul of all the books that I'm going to be getting rid of, and then share with you what is left on my shelves. There's actually more left than what I thought there would be, so that's pretty interesting, but I think mainly that's just because my Harry Potter books take up a lot of space, and then I do have Andy Gables. Also, what I didn't mention in that part where I talk about the books I'm keeping is that I'm also keeping my Game of Thrones slash Single Ice and Fire series um, because that's not on the actual shelf, it's on the top shelf. I need to put that back down. Um, so those are the one thing that I didn't actually put in there, I don't think. So let's actually jump in with the first group of books, which are going to be all of my Jodie Picoult's that I am not keeping. And I'm going to start with the first one that I actually mentioned recently that I had tried to read. Which is Sing You Home. And we all know from that previous wrap up that the reason why I wasn't enjoying this is because of the courtroom scenes. I don't know why, but it made me so anxious to think about actually getting to those scenes. And it was making me like skim through the book. So I realized that books that deal with like courtroom scenes, I tend to have issues with. I just I don't know why. I just don't think that to take that is a problem. I just think that for me, it was just like, I was just being like anxious over it. So sadly, I'm giving this away. I don't think it's a bad book. I don't think any of these books are, probably, are bad books. Um, it's just that. For me, I don't see myself reading this thing. Next we have Vanishing Act, which I've read two times before, so, but I haven't read it for like five years. It was good in the moment, but I've been starting to think that the cult books are becoming very formulaic, and it's just, you see a lot of the same things being rehashed through her books. So. This was a really good one though. So I'm getting rid of House Rolls. I actually, I haven't read this copy. I brought it, brought it and read it from the library, and then wanted it myself. And now I don't. I haven't thought of even picking it up for like five, two, three years since. So I just, it, and again, it deals with the courtroom case thing, and I'm just not in for that right now. The next book that I was going to get rid of is the Tenth Circle by. Of course. But actually I was just reading the synopsis of this and I realized this is not the book that I thought it was. I don't know what one of her books deals with that one. I I don't know, but I thought this was the one where the girl ha had like this fantastical um belief of something or other. And I oh keeping faith. Keeping faith is the one, not the tenth circle. So I'm actually gonna keep this one because I have not read this. That's not what I thought it was. So, uh, moving on. We had Sorry Teller. This one, I'm really sad that I'm giving it away because it deals with a topic that I actually like. Like, anything that deals with World War II in any shape or form, I'm going to pick up. And this deals with, I think, the lady who is always going to this one place all the time, and the man who owns the place um, eventually tells her that he was, or he is, was, is, a Nazi, and it's all about the fall of that. And I thought I would enjoy this story, but I really didn't like 
I don't remember what I didn't like about it exactly. I just know that I skimmed a lot of it. And again, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Julie Picot is moving very formulaic with her writing and the way that she structures her stories. That it just kind of gets boring reading her books because of that. So maybe that's part of the reason. And the last occult book I have here is Perfect Match. When you can't even remember what this book is really about, and even reading the synopsis doesn't make you feel familiar to the book, and I know I read this, I think that's a clue that I should just get rid of it. So, 2000 Names. This one um, is a fantasy trilogy, and I've had it for over a year at least. More like two, I think. And I just have no desire to pick it up. This one, now this one I actually may keep. I'm not 100% sure, but Casual Vagancy by J.K. Rowling. We all know I love the Harry Potter books, but this is her first adult fiction. And you can t definitely tell that she's like experimenting here, that she's just like going as far away from young adult middle grade as she possibly could with this book. But the thing is, when I tried to reread it, I couldn't get into the story at all. I remember really loving it the first time, but I do also remember that it took me a, like over 100 pages to actually get into it. And once I got past that 100 pages, it got better. It's just, I didn't have the patience to do that when I picked it up this, this, this time. So I don't know like if I should keep it or not. I just know that it's been a while since I've read it. And picking it up the second time, I just couldn't get into it. So I just, I'm on the fence. But for now, it's a tentative giveaway. We need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Schreiber. I really thought that I would actually like this. I like that it's not the typical looking at the victim of it, but looking at the parents. So if you do not know, this is about um, this woman who is like, I think she's writing letters. Yeah, she's writing letters to her ex-husband about their son who what who went to their, his school and shot up the place. And it's seen the effect on the mother of the shooter. And I think that's such an important topic because we always focus on the people who got shot. So I I really appreciated that this author, you know, went there and actually talked, like brought that up. But... I don't know. I couldn't get into the story. I think that it was just... I don't know why. I can't remember. It's been a while. All I know is that I DNF'd it pretty quickly, so I don't want to give that away. And it might be one of those books that I actually end up um, borrowing later on. Next we have Black Mass by Dick Lair and Gerard O'Neill. I've been struggling with nonfiction a lot lately, and it was just like that moment where I'm just like, I really don't want to read this. I will probably eventually pick up the film that's based off of this, but I don't know. I just found this kind of boring, which I think is like the predictable thing to say when it comes to nonfiction. But I, I can't help it. It's the way I feel with nonfiction lately. So I just sad. Oh well. Then we have Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I've already talked about this, I think. But I really don't appreciate the fact that, well, yeah, I don't want to say, I don't want to like belittle her experience because I get it. Depression is a very real, serious thing. And I'm not making light of that. But my issue here is that how she kind of like makes everything out like it's all fate. Like everything happened by fate. But you're a white privileged woman who had a career already, who had something that she could, um, like, rely on to give back her finances and she's like oh it was fake because this guy told me that I was going to come back here that she got the money to go on the travel but like really seriously like, you were an established author that's why you got the money because the publishers trusted you enough to give you the money at least be honest about it I felt, and like she kind of like mentions it but like she kind of like flies by it like she kind of like tries, tries to brush off that fact that she was an established author who had the trust of these publishers in order for them to be willing to give her the money before she wrote the book. So it's just like, just be honest. You're a white privileged woman, and it's like you don't have to feel guilty about it, but you should be, be able to recognize it and be willing to recognize it because that plays a 
part in why you were able to get back on your feet so fast. So that really bothered me this, in this reread, and that's why I decided to give this one away. Then we have Conqueror's Moon by Julian May. Um, I'm, I haven't read this one, and I am actually kind of interested in it, but I don't know. So this is another one that I'm kind of on the fence about. We'll see if I change my mind on this one. Um, because I really want to get into more fantasy, it's just been really hard for me to, like, because it's either they're, like, a super long, massive series, or I can't get the rest of them from the library. So it's just one of those things. But that is on the fence. Um, this one I have not actually read yet. This one I might, I might actually borrow from the library because I find it interesting that he traveled to Afghanistan and I want to see his perspective on his travels through there. But I'm also wondering what to think about it, considering that it is a travel. This was written as well as 1999, so. And I don't even really know the like the political things that were going on during that time. So again, I might borrow this for now. I don't see myself reading it, especially as it's non-fiction. The Map of Love by Ada Suf. Um, this one, I don't know why I bought. I, mean, I only bought it for 50 cents, so I don't like feel guilty over it. It's just I don't know why I did. It's just that I remember when I read it from the library, I, that I like skimmed the like last third of the book. And I remember just thinking, like, the last part of this book was just really bad. <laughs> and so that's why I don't know why. I don't know why I picked it up because it was like, it was good, but it wasn't good at the end. And it, the fact that I skimmed it, I, and I knew, but I don't know. So, what? Anyway. Then we have A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hussini. I love so much the kite runner by him, but I cannot seem to get into the rest of his book. And I think that's so typical of me. I loved so much the Keepers, could not get into any of the rest of Alice Hoffman's books. Same with this. I just I think that's just typical of me that if I love something so much, like like hardcore, the rest of the books are never gonna compare. It's the same thing with like Ellen Montgomery. I can never I can't carry any of her other books. It's just like and I'm not trying to compare them, it just happens that, it just happens. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just the way it is. I'm really sad because I thought that I would enjoy these other two books, but it just wasn't working. Eleanor and Park, this is YA. I remember really, really enjoying it. I appreciate the fact that we see a plus-size main character here, and that you know, they, feel, they felt definitely real, you know, but it's YA, and I don't see myself ever picking it up. Also, something I want to mention is the fact that I have read a tissue by her, which is her, one of her adult works, and I don't understand, like, how, but it, like, you can, like, yeah, I don't have no issues with linking the book, but nobody seems to, like, there's barely anybody who recognizes the problem in this, which is, like, with attachments, you have this guy whose job is to, like, go through people's work emails and make sure that they're not doing, like, writing, using their work emails for personal stuff. And instead of flagging it and moving on, he's not, like, not, like, far reading. He actually kind of, he reads through her stuff. So not only is he invading her privacy in that way, she, he's also basically stalking her, and that to me is very romantic. And then she makes it out like this is so romantic. It is not romantic at all. Uh, it's, it's like very low key stalk, stalker behavior here, and that to me is problematic. It's not as bad as, say, Twilight, but it is on the problematic side. And nobody who seems to like this book seems to want to recognize that problem, or they don't see it. So I don't know. But I just, I don't see myself ever reading any of her other books. I don't ever see myself rereading this one, so it's goodbye. Then another nonfiction, The Money Man's Man. I'm actually disappointed in this one because I love the film. I really wanted to read the book. 
I just couldn't get into it. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I think this is like one of those things where it's great when you read it the first time, but it's never going to be the same when you reread it. At least for me, that is. Um, I really loved how it felt kind of like a puzzle to me, like you're trying to piece everything together, how it all connects. And it's interesting because you can see the connections in different ways, you know, keeping on your own perspective of things. So I thought that was really cool. And I think he did such an amazing job with this. But when I tried to pick it up again, I couldn't read it. And I just don't see myself ever picking it up again after that. It was just... It's like he starts off with like the worst way in the worst way because of the main character that you're reading out from there. It's just it's all very, very dry. And I don't know how I got through it the first time. I just knew that I needed to get past it and I just did like I needed to this time, so oh well. The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. I don't know why I kept this one because it was very middling the first time. I think I thought that I would reread it and enjoy it, but it's been over a year since I read it the last time, and I just, every time I look at it, I don't have no interest in it, so, bye. The Virgin Suicides, I loved it the first time, but it's been over five years, I think, that I, since I've read this, and I don't see myself reading it anytime soon, so, bye. Then we have The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Ackerman. I have not read this, but this might actually, um, I might like borrow from the library like later later but for now I don't see myself reading it because the story sounds so interesting it said World War II it's a story that I know that I would very much be into it's just at this moment not hitting it. Glaciers by Alexis M. Smith this is her debut I don't even know if she's read anything after this one but it's been so long since I've read it and I don't think I really loved it the first time so Goodbye. Old Man's War by John Scalzi. I was actually reading this and I'm kind of liking it, but I don't know. It's just that I know that I'm not going to be able to read all the other books in the library. I'm not sure if I want to like buy the books. It's like middle I know they have at least the first book for sure at the library, so I will read it to the library eventually, maybe. And there, but for now, I just don't have the desire to. So, I, I would have to buy the books. I, I don't really want to at this point. So, if this is the Mills, the Panther, the Panther's the title, actually. Um, anyways, it's a thriller, and I don't know. I just haven't been doing well with thrillers, and so I just, I remember, like I said, I'm like, it's just gonna be a dud anyway, so why? Why? Why am I talking myself with this? The yeah. picture of Dory Gray by Oscar Wilde. I tried rereading this and I gained up to it pretty quickly. I couldn't get into it. Dracula by Bram Stoker. Liked it in the moment. Couldn't be bothered with it after. I do not know why I have the greater journey still. Don't know why. Goodbye. The Complete Sherlock Holmes. This one, my mom actually bought for herself. She couldn't get into it, so I took it off her hands. Then I read like the first story. I mean, yeah, just the first story, and his writing is so freaking dry and boring, so, oh well. The last one, can I mean, he can, could get past the fact that he wants to describe every little tiny detail, and then to find out the way that he portrays Native Americans is just very disrespectful, uh, made it very much easier to DNF, so. Bostonians didn't appreciate the fact that instead of like it, the actual story being its own thing, he was just using characters and story as a platform to philosophize. Wasn't going for that. All of Kitteridge, I found out this was a short story collection, and I don't care for short stories, and that turned me off really quickly. I did try to read it a little bit, and I did not like it at all. Especially as I didn't really like all of it herself. Um, the Great Gatsby, I did like it, but I think a lot of this kind of went over my head. It, it seemed like I shouldn't, but I think this is kind of the thing for me that I would have benefited from having this been read in a class format, because I really, 
I really loved that whole thing, and this is like kind of like one of those books that you read in on class and you go through the themes, and when and it helps, it would help me to like have other people talking about this, having the teacher go through it with me, because I felt like I was missing some things through this. I did enjoy it, but I don't think that is a book I'll ever read. And again, this is a book that I've had on shelves for over two years. So, so we have these three books. The Pearl, The Visit, and The Lifeboat. All three books I read for class and I was only keeping because of the fact that of that fact. I really loved going to school, going to these English classes because of the class discussion. And I think that's why I liked especially The Pearl because I was enjoying like the discussion aspect because when I tried to pick this up, I could we get into it? And I don't really like John Stanwyck. Sorry, Jane, but he does. But these two books, um, this one is middling. This one I didn't like, actually. I just like discussions. I thought I would pick this up again and see, but I couldn't be bothered, less bothered. Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Murilli. Um, I just couldn't get into this for some reason. I can't remember exactly the reason why. I know I had a, a, like a solid reason in mind when I was reading it, but now that I've like put this into it, I actually did think that I was going to like pick it up again, so I, this might be a book that I brought from the library at some point, but for now, it's going, going and gone. Killer Angels, so freaking boring, the writing was really dry and just basic, and I was really sad <laughs> because I was actually looking forward to reading something good Michael Shara for quite some time. Colors of the Earth. Oh, why did I even not try to pick this up again? Frankenstein. Like the first time, I'm gonna really bring the second time. I know why the cage bird sings by Maya Angelou. I get why people like her. What she had to say, I got and I understood and appreciated, but I, I remember that I did have some issues as a book, I can't remember what those issues were exactly anymore, but I just don't have the interest to reread her stuff, or rather read this one, so. The Woman, the woman in White by Wiki Collins. Fred, I really enjoyed this one, but I don't see myself reading it again. The 19th Wife by David Ebershaw. I'm giving this away only because at the moment I don't see myself wanting to read it anytime soon. And I did start reading it, but I don't know like what made me like put this aside at that moment. So again, it's just like for now. Best Child Carolina by Dorothy Allison. This one I really loved when I first read it, but in thinking about it, I just don't see myself rereading it and enjoying uh, getting that same experience over again or just being able to enjoy the same. But it just, it's like one of those things, like I know that the reason why I'm not picking up a copy of In Order to Live is that even though I loved it so much, I know that in rereading it, it probably would ruin that experience for me. And I think that's kind of a mistake way with this one, like it wouldn't be the same. And I just, I feel like I could handle that. But I also know with this one that I couldn't get into any for other books. And it's not just, it's not like the same way with the other one for us. It's like I loved other books so much that it, it affected it. It was just more like I couldn't get into her writing or her stories. And I was wondering if I would read this again, would it have that? Would I not enjoy it? So I don't know. Then we have the Edgar Allan Poe's complete collections of his tales and poems. This one I'm just giving away because I'm going to get a copy of Justin Holmes. I tried reading the tales, couldn't get into it, and I just I can't deal with having this copy on my shelves anymore. And I just need only the poems, so I'm going to eventually get poems only, so I can actually read them again. Let the Great World Spin. Nobody mentions that these are basically short stories, and that the only thing that connects them all is the fact that they're all spectators to this guy that's walking up this rope that's that he tied between these two buildings, and I'm just like, that. I, I don't have the energy to tie to like another short story collection. I don't like them, they don't work for me, so goodbye. The 
City of Women by David R. Gilham. I remember, like, this felt like a nothing story. Like, I enjoyed it, but it was very light on any real, like, substance. Like, it just felt like, it, like the author could have gone further with it, but she, he really didn't. So I feel like everything's kind of, like, on the surface. So, sadly, I don't know why I kept this, but I'm giving it away now. The Five People You Meet in Heather by Mitch Oval. Just have no desire to read it again. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Really just uh, boring, but I was keeping it because of the cover, which is very rare for me. Like, I don't hear about covers most usually, but it's just so pretty. And I love that there's illustrations and everything in the book. So, I don't know. I mean, like, for the first half, I was actually enjoying it, but, like, it started getting, like, it started feeling like it was very repetitive. Like, he was just going through his motions with his stories. So, it's going, going, and gone.